Uh, hello everyone, Leif Reed here. And today we have a kind of important book to me personally uh, because my grandfather really liked this book and he would recite from it uh, sometimes. And it's the Rubiat by Omar Khayyam. So um, this, and you can see here, this is his version, the, the, the binding's coming off and everything, so it's pretty darn old. Um, so what is the Rubiat? The Rubiat is a series of um, um, uh, 10th century, I think, Islamic poetry. And this was at the height, uh, the golden age of, um, of, of the Middle East uh, in uh, Baghdad, which is in Iraq, right? Yeah, it's a rally. And um, I think that's where he's from, from, from uh, Baghdad. And um, so, you know, this is the height of the, you know, Islamic uh, caliphate, um, you know, in the medieval century and uh, the Abbasidian empire, I think. Uh, so, you know, what does Omar uh, write about? What is his poetry about? Uh, it's about two things, um, the weather, wine and women <laughs> probably not the most classic um islamic uh concepts that we uh have today for sure uh the uh the sort of uh free lactic daisical i like to call it islamic hippie poetry I, I find that very funny um but that's really what it is and um and uh it's about yeah, you know, how you have spring turns to fall and, and so on. Um, I'll, I'll redo a bit of it. Sorry, actually, okay, I'm totally wrong. Here it says it right here. Uh, Omar was born at Naishapur in Khorasan in the latter half of the 11th century and died within the first quarter of the 12th century. And I think it was right after that... Um, or rather, it was actually the 13th century that the, that the Mongols came in, I believe. Awake, for morning in the bowl of night has flung the stone that put the stones to flight. And lo, the hunter of the east has caught the sultan's turret in a noose of light. Dreaming when dawn's left hand was in the sky, I hear a voice within the tavern cry. Awake, my little ones, and fill the cup before life's liquor in its cup be dry. And as the cock crew, those who stood before the tavern shouted, Open the door, you know how little while we have to stay, and once departed may return no more. So already there, he's talking about, you know, uh, the, you know, the cups, uh, the, the enjoyment of life, enjoying the moment, not ruminating, just enjoying life. Uh, I don't know, something very sweet about it. Oh, yes. Now to the new, now the new year, reviving old desires, the thoughtful soul to solitude retire, retires where the white hand of Moses on the bow puts out and Jesus from the ground suspires. I'm kind of shocked to see Christian names. Uh, they, they do have Moses in the Quran, but Jesus, I, I actually don't remember this being in here. Uh, that's, that's weird. Um, Aram indeed is gone with all its rose and Jamshid's seven ringed cup where no one knows. But still the vine her ancient ruby yields, and still a garden by the water blows. And David's lips are locked, but in divine, high piping pell Levi, with wine, 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 red wine, the nightingale cries to the rose, that yellow cheek of hers so incardinine. Come, fill thy cup. And in the fire of spring, the winter garment of repentance fling. The bird of time but has a little way to fly, and lo, the bird is on the wing. And look, a thousand blossoms with the day, woke 
and a thousand scattered into clay. And this first summer month that brings the rose shall take Jamshid and Kakobad away. But come with old Kayam and leave the lot of Kakobad and Kaik Horshur forgot. Let Rustam lay about him as he will, or Hatid Tai cry supper, heed them not. Anyway, it, it just goes on like that. The themes of just enjoyment of nature, of alcohol, apparently, and and other and others company, especially women. So you can't argue with that. I mean, the guy is just really relaxed. Oh yeah, and here's you know an example of a. Uh, you know the uh, the length and the style, and it seems to be it seems to switch between its its rhyming styles, and it also has illustrations and stuff in here, at least in this version, you know, which are very very pretty. Oh yeah, so this one is about how the sultan's turret is caught in a noose of light, and so he's describing the dawn there and how the light has caught itself upon the uh, minaret or whatever they're called. Okay, and here's here's a great one. Um, here with a loaf of bread beneath the bow, a flask of wine, a book of verse, and thou. Beside me singing in the wilderness, and wilderness is paradise, and now. And there is a picture of that line, and you see a Kayam just relaxing, having a nice drink. His woman is beside him listening, and she's just you know they're just vibing you know they're just vibing very hard and it's funny because i think in this image you actually see the outline of the moon so the moon is still in the sky and the and the oh i guess this is an early morning it must be near dusk or something but um yeah um i don't really have too much to say about this this is a very short poem i mean or or poetry um the whole thing is only like maybe you know I mean, it's over a hundred pages, but like, there's only like, uh, you know, two, like, s like eight sentences per page. So you'll read this in a sitting. In fact, there's a really great uh, YouTube um, audio reading of it of this old guy in this cloak. You'll you'll know when you see it. But um, yeah, I mean, honestly, as you read through this, it gets more and more. What exactly are you talking about? And he'll name drop all the time too, so you won't like know. But um, it's just comfy. I like it. It's like it's it's it, it, it's a mood, I guess. For example, I'll just read something here. I sent my soul through the invisible, some letter of that afterlife to spell. And after many days, my soul returned and said, "Behold, myself and heaven and hell." Heaven but the vision of fulfilled desire, and hell the shadow of a soul on fire. Cast on the darkness into which ourselves so late emerge from, soon shall so soon expire. We are no other than a moving row of visionary shapes that come and go, round with this sun-illuminated lantern held at midnight by the master of the show. Impotent pieces of the game he plays upon this checkerboard of night and days, hither and thither moves and checks and slays, and one by one in the closet lays. Come on now, that's... <sighs> he says it, uh, he says all the typical stuff with such um, brevity and, and, and flair that I, I can't help but love it. Oh, here's another one. I'll, I'll read you this one and show you the picture. For I remember stopping by the way to watch a potter thumping his wet clay, and with its all obliterated tongue it murmured, Gently, brother, gently pray. And here is a picture of that, of the potter doing his art. I'm sure, don't rip this anymore. It has to, then it has to be ripped. Um, 
But yeah, that is the short, short, short um, book of the Rubiat by Omar Khayyam, a medieval uh, Islamic poet that seemed to not really care about the main tenets of Islam. Perhaps they just were wealthy enough that they didn't have to care. But uh, yeah, there it is. Um, it's good. I like it. My grandfather obviously liked it. And when I think about some of the poems he composed, they were kind of similar in the style to that, where it was A, B, or uh, A, A, B, B, A, B, A, B. It's very simple, almost Dr. Seuss-like, but it, it just works. I, I don't know. I like it. Uh, anyway, guys, that is that. And uh, I would recommend it. And um, yeah, anyway, take care. Bye. And always keep reading.